want to give you a few tips for the um, shoreline fishing. A few things that I feel like makes my approach more efficient and just uh, the, allows me to catch more fish. One is I like to travel really light. I don't I don't carry a bucket or a stool. Um, I carry my, my tackle in a backpack so I don't have to keep setting something down and picking that up because if you carry a lot of stuff you're gonna end up being stationary. You're gonna pick a spot and you're just gonna sit there and you're kind of relying on the fish coming to you or picking that one spot. When when you travel light, it's really easy to cover a lot of water the, then just kind of work your way along the bank and, and figure out what the fish are doing. Um, and, 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 and then in being mobile, if you have a rod that is um, that's kind of multifunctional. Like I have a, a, a seven foot rod here and that allows me to cast it, it allows me to fish it under a float, it allows me to dip, but I can do a little bit, bit of everything with just one rod. I don't want to have to keep setting down a rod and picking up a rod and keep up with it. I just want to, I just want to carry, carry one rod when I fish. And then uh, another thing that, that, that helps me be a lot more efficient is to use satellite images online. That's a real benefit that we have right now. Um, you can pull up Google Earth or, 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 or a maps program that, that has a satellite function and look at the area where you're thinking about going where you know there's public access maybe by a bridge, maybe in a park, and look at that shoreline and you can see where you can get along the bank. You can see where it's a little bit, where, where the slope changes, maybe where there's st some stumps in the water that the, 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 like out from a riprap bank, all those little distinctions that make spots that kind of look the same make one a lot better than another you can see by looking in the water and um, just those little things I think can help you be a lot more efficient with your mag fishing. Um, with just really three basic techniques I can cover most of the waters where uh, most of the situations that I'm going to encounter, a lot of times I'm just going to be casting. I'm just going to have a just going to have a single jig on. If I have fairly open water, um, maybe scattered cover, I've got stumps, brush, things that I can cast around, or or where the where, where maybe a rock bank that the crappie are cruising around. Then I'm going to take something uh, with a um, something with a moving type of tail, um, like a, a, a hyper grub or a stroller. And I'm just going to cast that and reel it, maybe add a few little little jigging motions or pauses, but I'm just going to cover water and, 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 and that's going to be a, a good way to find fish a lot of the times. Uh, if I have a steeper bank where the fish are closer to the bank and maybe I've got some some different cover that's within reach, um, within the reach of, a, of, a, of the rod tip or just a little bit out, then I'm going to do one of two things. Either I'm going to dip the bait where I'm, where I'm really just putting it straight down into the cover or I'm going to pitch it and let it swing back down to me. Um, and for either one of those, I like to use like a, um, a baby shad is, is going to be a great option for that um, or a slab slay or something that, that doesn't have as much a strong action but but always has that little bit of wavering that's just going to drop down in front of the fish and I might just hold it in place next to the cover or pitch it out and swing it back down. The third approach that I like to use if we have a lot of shallow cover um, or, or yeah, if I feel like I need to slow fish. it down then I like to add a float to, to it because <laughs> then I can put it right next to the cover and just let it let it sit there or maybe twitch it a little bit work it through the area and when I'm fit when I there we go. Using the float, um, Feels like a piece of fish. I'm usually usually going to use either a oh, yeah, baby fun. shad swimmer um, or a um, one of the itty bet baits that I can just that, that I can just drop down and, and let them find the fish. And with those three approaches, just about anything you encounter around the bank, you're going to be able to find something that, that's going to do the job. Say the um, the box that I carry. Um, the, when I'm bank fishing, and it's not always set up exactly the same, but I, but 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 a box this size gives me plenty of options. The, the fishing that I'm doing, have an assortment of jig heads and all your, I mean, all the way from the from the 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 itty bed heads to um, the, the you know some some larger moglo heads have a variety of, of sizes of of heads. I've got some split shot in here. 
I have a few bobbers including uh, both slip float and set float type options and then I have different styles of bait styles and colors of baits that that lend itself to different styles of, 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 of fishing I've got some with moving tails like the like the hyper grubs and then I've got stuff that that I like to use that are a little bit more um, still like the baby shad and looks like like in this box I have um, Looks like I've got about a dozen different um, baits in here that, that cover the different uh, watercolor scenarios and different types of action. So I've got everything I need.